So what is bitterness? I'm going to go through with some of the characteristics of a bitter person. Now, I'm deeply indebted to T.S. Rendell, who was a professor of mine when I went to Prairie Bible Institute years and years ago. Deeply indebted to him for the first five. I added five more after 28 years of counseling and came up with, here's the characteristics of bitterness. Now I've got 10, and I'll take all 10 and put them in my book on Original Thoughts by Jim Velez. <laughs> Not really. But I want to give credit to where credit is due because he was the one that kind of got me looking at this whole piece of bitterness. And so putting them all together, I think it'll make a lot of sense to you. Let me go over the characteristics of a bitter person. Number one, a bitter person finds it impossible to speak peaceably with others in their family. People who are in emotional pain kick anyone who gets close to the wound. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Carol, can I use you for a minute? Come on up. You may be around someone, if you could just have a seat right here for just a moment. You may be around someone and they have a very, very difficult time speaking peaceably with others in their family. Watch carefully here. Her leg is broken. We're on a camping trip. Her leg is broken. It's compound fracture, so the bone is actually sticking out through her leg and through her pant. And I say, Carol, we've got to fix this. We've got to get this stabilized. We've got to pull it back in there. Chris over here can help me. I'm going to put my hand around your ankle and um, probably Misty will come up and we'll pull hold that pant leg up a little bit so we can get that back through the meat there and kind of line it up and then we'll get some bark and put it around that and then we're going to duct tape that to hold it so we can move you okay got that <laughs> all right now it's only going to take me about 30 seconds to just put my hands on your ankle and kind of pull that back through, okay? So, bear with me. I don't have any Tylenol, don't have anything, just bear with no me. Percocet. No Percocet. <laughs> As I reach to grab her ankle, I have one question. What is she gonna do with the other foot? <laughs> right? Thank you. How many of you think she might want to kick me? <laughs> but I'm trying to help her. And oftentimes when you try to help people who are wounded, you get close to the wound. They'll kick you. They'll kick you. But people who become bitter find it impossible to speak uh, peaceably with others in their family. Their, their primary defense mechanism is to kick anyone who gets close. They won't let them get close. The second characteristic, they speak with barbed and cutting words, hurting others deeply. Words are weapons to them. They're honed to perfection. They wield those words like knives with a critical caustic spirit. That becomes their ally. They keep others at a distance. The slightest injury becomes major. They struggle in maintaining relationships and they wrap themselves in barbed wire. The third characteristic of someone who's bitter is that they will use language characterized by hostility and suspicion. Hostility and suspicion consume tremendous amounts of emotional energy. A person may be, feel safe, but they're isolated and alone. It's like the dog that's, that's feeding in the bowl and, and you reach down to take the bowl and put some more in it. And as soon as you reach down there, that dog would... <laughs> Didn't mean to make you jump. <laughs> And, you reach, and the dog does that and he growls. The problem is when he's growling, he can't eat. So if he growls, he's starving. <laughs> okay? But a person who's bitter is like that dog. It gives him a sense of control. It gives him a sense of power. But he's actually starving to death when that happens. 
So the bitter person has emotional guards constantly on duty. The bitter person criticizes what others say and do. Because by pointing out other people's faults, they don't have to focus on their own. Criticism itself gives justification. It keeps accusers at bay. What's the quickest way for them to build themselves up? Cut somebody else down. It's the cheapest way. A bitter person disrespects others and is unthankful. They have a very difficult time showing respect for other people because to show gratitude denotes need. And to be needy is to be weak. So if you follow the reasoning out, here's how it works. If I have gratitude, then I have a need. If I have a need, then I can be weak. If I'm weak, I'm vulnerable. If I'm vulnerable, vulnerable I can be hurt. If I can be hurt, I will feel pain. I'm not going to feel any more pain, so I'm not going to show any gratitude because I don't have a need. And that's the reasoning, whether they recognize it or not. Bitterness robs them of joy and in turn any gratefulness or thankfulness that could be there. Number six, characteristics of a bitter person. They rehearse the past over and over again. Because by rehearsing the past, their batteries are charged. And with recharged batteries, they can make silver bullets. And they put those silver bullets in there and and they're ready to fire them at any moment. They're not free to enjoy the present. They can't look forward to the future. They're locked into the past. A bitter person twists the motives and intentions of others when they try to come alongside to help. Bitterness twists the heart so that the eye cannot clearly see. And a bitter person will twist your motive. They will tell you why you did something. You did that because, boom, and they come in on the motive level. And I want you to know something. Whenever a person attacks you at a motive level, you have absolutely no recourse. Because judge, jury, and executioner have come in. No sense trying to defend it because they know the motive. They know your motive. To question, to question the motive is to pretend to read the heart. If I say I know what your motive is, I can pretend to read where you're coming from. And that gives a, uh, an incredible sense of false power to a bitter person. Number eight. A bitter person resists change or help. The longer the bitterness remains in the individual, the more embedded into the personality it becomes. I remember times when I was a small child, I'd get a little splinter um, in my finger, and I would, it would hurt, and I would go up to my mother. Carol, I'm going to switch with you now. You're going to be my mother, okay? And I would go up to my mother. You can help me now, okay? I was going to take care of you. And I would say, Mama, would you, would you help me with that? Please, please, do something with it. Don't touch it. <laughs> and I would pull it away. I want help, but don't get near it. That make sense? And so they'll communicate that they have, you know, that they, they made, but they'll pull back. They resist change or help. Let me have you do something. Hold your hands up for a minute. Ah, I love a Pentecostal church in Tulsa. <laughs> put your hands together. Hold them together. Put them in your lap. You got them in your lap? Which thumb is on top, left or right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Don't, it's, this isn't a compatibility test. I don't want you to look over your husband or your wife and go, did I do this right? Did I do this right? Yeah. No, this is just your personal preference. You got it there? That's okay for you? Okay, now watch me carefully. What I want you to do is slowly pull your fingers apart, shift them, and put them back together and hold them there so the other thumb is on top. How's that feel? Awkward. Someone else. How's that feel? Wrong. Weird. Ready for this? This is called 
change. <laughs> you decided to change something. Hmm. Now take your hands apart, put them back together. Which way'd they go? Ah, uh, tell me what you know about change. What did I teach you about change? It's wrong. <laughs> what else about change? It's hard to change. It hurts your joints. Hurts your joints. What? Un it's uncomfortable. We fear change. We fear change. It's not necessary unless there's an improvement. It's not necessary unless there's an improvement. Hard to make it stick. Hard to make it stick. It's easy to go back to the old stuff. Now, can I tell you something? I didn't teach you anything about change. I just had you move your hands. <laughs> You experienced truth. Anytime you can experience truth, it will stick with you longer than if you're told it. Because you felt truth. That make sense? It's a neat way to look at things. But it's hard, it's difficult to change. And a person who's bitter resists change or help for some of those very reasons. A known hell is a whole lot better than an unknown heaven. And lastly, or second to last, they strive to keep past injuries fresh as though they happened yesterday because they have to keep the past fresh and alive. Any perceived injustice, whether real or imagined, is retrieved from the memory banks at a moment's notice. They can recount the events, the players, the motives, the injustices ad infinitum. No one is able to resurrect the past as quickly as those who need to keep it fresh to maintain their purpose. The past must stay alive. And lastly, they exhibit indifference and numbness toward the hurts they inflict on others. Bitterness is emotional novocaine to them. Bitter people are insensitive to the hurts they inflict on others. That numbness serves a purpose, however. When I go to the dentist, he has me open my mouth, and he pulls out from behind his back this honking big needle, and then he gives me a feeling, numb. And the reason he gives me that feeling is so that I won't feel another feeling. And bitter people are numb and indifferent to the hurts they give to others because by doing so, they won't feel pain. It deadens and it ultimately destroys. But the Bible says it eats away at the container in which it resides. Now my question to you is this. Do you know anyone who may be bitter? Do you know someone who has anger that's been there for a long, long period of time and that anger has not just sat there but it has morphed and distorted and grown and the gangrene has come around it and it has distilled into bitterness? Whenever we're hurt, these are the kinds of things that can happen. And when we become bitter, it just poisons us in our hearts.